Hello guys, welcome to the first episode of AMC Artisan Masterclass. My name is Morchen. I'm a digital fashion designer and I'm also a community manager for artisans. And in, for this episode one, I would love to teach you how to apply digital fashion to your photo. For example, we have this Layla here, beautiful Layla. We have her picture and we would love her to wear our digital fashion. And on the right hand side, you, you can see the applied photo with smooth and realistic looking. Applying digital fashion into your photo allows you to share with your friends and your followers and also adding utilities to your Web3 digital fashion. And it's a very important skill for our designers to have as well. Personally, I have these five simple steps for me to follow to create a digital fashion garment on the photo. In this tutorial, I will guide you through these five steps. First, post your avatar in close 3D. Second, create a lighting and rendering. Correct lighting is very important to make your render look realistic on your photo. Three, save render with transparent background. With transparent background, it will easily allow you to overlay your digital garment onto your photo. Four, use distort tool to fit your photo. Five, adjust colors of your image to create a natural and realistic effect. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate my workflow from creating a 3D garment to exporting your final finished work with Close 3D, Blender, and Pixelmator. But with the same logic, you can use different softwares such as C4D, Photoshop to create the same effect. Let's say we have this project, we want to use the 3D garment onto our photo. So firstly, we need to post the avatar to, to match with your photo. What we want to do is we want to save this project and create a new project. So file, go to new project. Let's input the avatar into the 3D window. You need to make sure the avatar you imported is exactly the same avatar you used for your last project. So now we have Feifei in our 3D window. What we want to do is we want to have a reference photo to post this avatar exactly to match with your photo. So we want to create a square of the pattern. So let's draw a square and move the square into the back. Then we can add a pattern by clicking the pattern tool. So let's select Let's select the try on reference photo and click. OK. Let's just make it bigger. So we have Layla in our photo. Now we just need to make sure the avatar is matching. So go to the X ray mode in your viewport. Now we can pose our avatar freely. What I would do is I would only rotate the joint instead of the arm itself. So I would click on the joint and use your gizmo. Do not drag, but use your gizmo to, to kind of rotate and find the right position for each part of your body. Once you're done posing, now uncheck the X-ray mode. You can see the pose is pretty much very similar to our photo. Now I think it's our time to save this pose. So go to your file and save as. You can select save as pose. So you can give it a name and click save. We're going to open our previously saved project with our 3D garments. Now we need to assign the new pose to our existing avatar. But before you do that, to save our time, if you have really low particle distance, I highly recommend you to go to the property editor, increase the particle distance to 20 or 30. Now let's assign our pose. So double click on the pose we just saved and click OK. Now our pose is ready. You can check everything is fine. She look very sassy. Now it's the time to decrease the particle distance to give a really smooth finish of our mesh. I would recommend five to 10 and we can simulate again until the mesh become very smooth. 
When you think simulation is stopped, press spacebar to stop the simulation. We're all done. We're ready to export into Blender. Make sure the UV is correctly arranged in the little box. UV map is very important if you want to export your garment into other 3D softwares. Sometimes you might find your UV very messy. What you need to do is you want to arrange everything into one box. You can rotate it, you can zoom it, as long as you can make sure the edge of your pattern is inside of the box. If you skip this step, your textures of your materials will be out of place once you import into Blender or any other softwares. Come back to our export menu. We need to select thick and check unified UV map. And you can check diffuse map, which is our color map, and normal map, which is the texture of the material. And then for the basic, we have scale. I always recommend to you to choose meter instead of any other measurements. Meter is such a decent size when you export into your blender. And everything's okay. Click OK. Now let's get into Blender. We can create a new project and we can delete the default cube. We can delete the default lights and the default camera. We want to import the OBJ that we exported from Clo. So let's find that folder. That's the object file I need. And you don't have to change anything here. Let's import. If you are why the texture is not showing, it's because you didn't check the render view. Once you get into render view, everything looks perfect. Now it's the time to create lightings. Go to the folder that you need and find the photo and drag it into your blender. You can zoom it smaller and move it around. And you can see how it aligns with your photo right now. But don't worry if they are not perfectly aligned. We can sort that out later. In this particular photo, this lighting is coming from this direction and no light from here. And you can see the shadows on her arm and you can see the shadows here. So we can basically make sure that the light we need is sunlight. Go to create a new light. Let's add sun. Let's just play around with the angle. And the color of the sunlight is really, really important as well. So you can see the light is warm. So we can select a warmer tone for our light. Go to your front view again and just try to match them together. I think now we can render out this image. So delete the background photo and it's time to add a new camera and make sure in your render settings, film checked as transparent. Now just move your garment into your camera, press zero and in your viewport, you can check lock camera to view so you can zoom in and out. Now we're ready, let's render out the image. Once the render is done, you can save the image by clicking image, save. You can save into the folder that you need. Now let's open Pixelmator. The logic of using Pixelmator and Photoshop is very similar. So if you understand how I use Pixelmator, you can use the same logic and use it in Photoshop. Create a new document. So we are going to select the image we want we want her to wear. So let's import this image as a canvas. So now let's add our render to our photo as a second layer. Press add and find the photo. Now you have the digital garment that we exported earlier from Blender as a transparent background. So you can play along with this garment and just rotate it and just try to match it with the photo. It doesn't look so bad now. Let's lower the opacity of this layer. In this case, I can see how much of the garments I need to tweak. 
Now let's use the thwart tool. And I'm going to manually distort the portion of the garment. And you can always increase the opacity to see how the garment looks. Not too bad. Next, we just need to mask out the area which is supposed to be covered by your body parts, like your neck, your arm, and your body. You have two methods for this. You can either erase out the part you don't want, go to the erase tool, and erase the part you don't want to see. It gives you a soft edge and gives you more control. And don't worry about this gap. We can fix this later. The second tool is to use selection tool. So go to selection tool and free selection. You have this exact same tool in Photoshop as well. So you can select parts you don't want. And you can delete it. With selection tool, you have some really sharp edges you want to soften. So you can use eraser tool again to go along the edge to soften the edge. And for smaller area, you can always use erase tool because it gives you more control. You can use Apple Pencil and use Wacom Pad for Photoshop. Continue clearing the area you don't want to see. Sometimes if you have a shorter garment, your undergarment would be seen. So you can easily fix this with a distort tool. So you can go to the second layer of the original photo and you can move the undergarment away to show more skins and use the retouch tool to fix the shadow. Sometimes eraser does not erase clean properly so you need to always make sure to double check. In this particular scenario we have a belt we need to fix so I would draw along with the selection tool Use the distort tool to move this belt to the right place. Use the distort tool to arrange the proportion of your garment to create a more dramatic effect. Apply when you think everything's down. You can also create shadow, but in this particular scenario, everything looks quite natural already. But how to create shadow? Add a new layer and put the new layer between your digital garment and your photo and you can paint some dark areas. So go to your paint brush and select a soft brush. Paint along where the shadow is supposed to be. And you can always use blur to give a soft effect. When everything looks good, you can combine three layers together, merge them. So when they are one image, one layer, you can easily add effects such as noise, sharpen, vintage, Or you can just simply adjust the color because they are one layer, so everything will look very cohesive and natural. I think that's it. That's our final image. You can now export your image, save copy as photos. You can share the Photoshop image or pixel matter image, or even more, you can share as JPEG. Thank you so much for joining, and I will see you next session.